Okay, welcome back. This is Mr. Hassan's Mass Channel. I'm now answering question number two from the January 2024 Pure Mathematics P4 International A Level Edexcel exam. Here we have a question. Part A is about partial fractions. We have to split up this fraction, this this um, algebraic fraction, into separate parts. Partial fractions, it's called. Now, in this particular question, they kindly gave us the form in which it's going to be split up into. It's possible that they, they you know, might not have done that. And we can see here what happens when we have what's called a repeated factor. All right, so you have 2x plus 1 squared. That's called a repeated factor, That when the bracket is squared. And this is how you deal with it. So you have, they're all linear factors. This is just repeated ones. You have a over x minus 2 plus b over, you have one of them without being squared. And then plus c over that factor squared. That's how you deal with these repeated factors. And there's like reasons behind this which we won't go into now. But um, if you were to um, add fractions together, you'll understand, if you kind of do the reverse process, you kind of understand where or why that occurs. But we don't need to go into that. But just in this particular question, they gave us this particular form, which is kind of them. They didn't have to. So we can just go ahead and just um, find the values of A, B and C. So first thing you do is you get rid of all of the denominators. So you multiply both sides of this by the LCM of the denominators, which is basically this, which is x minus 2 times 2x plus 1 squared. You do that to both sides, 2x plus 1 squared. When you do it to this side, they the whole thing disappears. You're left with 3x plus 4. And we know that's identical to... Now, the a, when you multiply it by this, the x minus 2 cancels out, so you're left with a over 2x plus 1 squared. And the b, when you multiply it by this, the b fraction, the, one of the 2x plus 1s cancel out, you're left with x minus 2 times 1 of the 2x plus 1s. And then the c, when you multiply it by this, the 2x plus 1 squared cancels out, and you're left with c times x minus 2. Now we have to find the values of a, b, and c. Now there's a variety of methods we could use to find those values. Probably the easiest thing to do first would be to use a value of x which causes um, some of the brackets to become zero, thereby eliminating that letter and leaving other letters. So for example, if I want to know what makes the bracket x minus 2 become zero, I know it's going to be x equals 2. So if I replace x equals 2 inside this whole identity, this becomes 3 times 2 plus 4. And this becomes a times 2 times 2 plus 1 squared. This becomes 0 and this becomes 0 because you have 2 minus 2 0. So the whole thing, so b and c are basically eliminated from our calculation. And we're left with something with one unknown, which is a. So you have 3 times 2 is 6 plus 4 is 10. And here you have a times, and that's going to be 4 plus 1, 5. That's 25 squared is 25. So 25a equals 10. That means a is equal to 10 over 25, which we can simplify as um, 2 over 2 over 5. So a is 2 fifths. So that's one of our values that we need. Now to find b and c, we can do a very similar thing with the other bracket 2x plus 1. So we have 2x plus 1. What makes 2x plus 1 become 0? Well, when x equals negative a half. So I can replace x with negative a half. Then these two will disappear. These two will become 0. These brackets will become 0. The a and b will be eliminated from our calculation, leaving us with c. So when we put x equals negative a half, you're left with 3 times negative a half plus 4 is equal to this. And this will be cancelled out. You're left with c times negative a half minus 2. So this gives you minus 3 over 2 plus 4 equals, that's going to be minus 2 and a half, that's minus 5 over 2 C. That gives you, um, if you add these together, that's going to be 8 over 2, so it's going to be minus 5 over 2. Okay, that's, no, that's not going to be minus 5 over 2. It's going to be, that's going to be 8 over 2 minus 3 over 2. That's going to be positive 5 over 2 equals negative 5 over 2c. So they're the same thing. So therefore, you're going to have c equals negative 1. So that is the next value of 
um, one of the letters. Now the problem with B is it's eliminated by putting x equals 2 and also by x equals minus half. So it's eliminated in both cases. So we can't find B by substituting a value of x into the um, identity. But what we can do is we can for example, com compare the coefficients on you know of x's on both sides. Now if you were to expand all of these the highest power you would get would be x squared and the lowest thing you would you'd get would be a constant now the easiest thing for you to deal with is the x squared because x squared will be caught by these two brackets and this c won't have an x squared associated with it so what we can do is we can compare the coefficients of x squared on both sides on this side we have zero x squared on this side we're going to have if you expand this bracket, this is going to become 4x squared times a. That's going to be 4ax squared. And on, on this, this particular term is going to be b times 2x squared. That's 2bx squared. And there will be no other x squared terms. So that's probably um, the easiest way to find now what's missing, which is b, because we know what a is. It's 2 fifths. So we can say 0 equals 4 times 2 fifths plus 2b. So we can say 0 equals 8 over 5 plus 2b. So we can say that um, 2b equals minus 8 over 5. So when you divide both sides by 2, you get minus 4 over 5. So b is minus 4 fifths. So now we can say our original 3x plus 3x over 3x plus 4. So 3x plus 4 over 2x minus 5 times x, um, x, sorry, what am I talking about? 2x plus 1, x minus 2 times 2x plus 1. x minus 2, what am I, what am I writing? x minus 2 times 2x plus 1 times 2x plus 1 squared is equal to and we have a over x minus 2 so 2 fifths over x minus 2 now if you have 2 fifths over x minus 2 that's the same as 2 over 5 times x minus 2 and then you've got minus b which is 4 over 5 times and that's 2x plus 1 that was the one that wasn't squared and the last one was I think it was equal to minus 1 so you have minus 1 over 2x plus 1 squared. So there we have our partial fraction. Okay, we split up into partial fractions and there is the answer to part A. Part A is normally, partial fractions part A is normally doing something which we're going to use in subsequent parts. What does the next part of the question tell us to do? It tells us to hence find the exact value of this integral which happens to be the same thing, and I've just written down the result from the first question here. It happens to be exactly the same as what we split into partial fractions. So obviously writing it out like this will help us to integrate it. So basically what we can do is we need to find, whoops, we need to find the integral, okay, between the limits of 12 and 7 of this. So you got 2, over 5 times x minus 2 minus 4 over 5 times 2x plus 1 minus 1 over 2x plus 1 squared with respect to x. Now these two forms can be dealt with using lin. This can be dealt with using um, the normal type of integration because we can write this as 2x plus 1 to the power of minus 2 outside the function will be the differential force inside it we can use the normal type of differential integration which is adding 1 to the power dividing by the new power and the differential force inside the function so that can be done by reversing the chain rule but these two can be done using reversing the chain rule but using the lin okay because here we have something of the form f dash of x over f of x so we use the lin and this is of the form f dash of x times f of x. So there we use a normal type of reversing the chain rule. Now what I'm going to do is something a bit weird. Um, I don't know 
if you'll see other people doing this, but I always like to do the following. I like to take out the constants. In this case, what I'm going to do is I'm going to take these two terms separately and integrate them. I'm going to take out two fifths because that's common in these two terms. I have 12 and 7. And I'm going to write this as 1 over x minus 2 minus, and that's going to be 2 over 2x plus 1. Then I'm going to integrate that separately from this. You can do that. There's no problem. You can split up an integral into parts. And this is going to be 2x plus 1 to the power of minus 2 with respect to x. I personally find it easier to do it this way. You can do it any way you want to. Okay, You can do it in one go. Just integrate this with all these fractions. I like to keep these fractions outside and then deal with them afterwards. I, put, I, I find that way easier. Okay, So now I'm going to do this. I'm going to actually integrate this part now. This part can be integrated. It's ready to be integrated. This gives you the lin of the modulus of x minus 2 minus 2 times the lin of the modulus of 2x plus 1. But I must divide by the differential of what's inside the fraction, of fraction so that 2 it will cancel with that 2 anyway. Close the brackets. I've got 12 and 7 minus. Then I'm going to have this. When I integrate this, I have to add 1 to the power. So 2x plus 1 the power of minus 1 then divide by the new power which is going to give us divide by the new power which is minus 1 and multiply the denominator by the difference of what's inside the function which is 2 and this is 12 7 okay so let's just uh, simplify this bit this is 2 fifths and I've got lin of I can combine these together because these twos have cancelled out so I can have the lin of the modulus of x minus 2 over 2x plus 1 right and that's 12 and 7 minus and this will give you you got a minus here that's going to be plus i can put plus there because that minus will give you a plus there and then i'm going to have 1 over 2x plus 1 and 12 and 7. okay so let's now put the values in so i have two fifths and this is going to be the lin of so now I've got 12 minus 2, which is 10, over, that's going to be 24 plus 1, 25. Okay, now I don't have to put the modulus sign anymore because this is positive. Minus the lin of, put 7 into here, you've got 7 minus 2, which is 5, over, that's 15. Okay. Um, and I've got to add to that what I put in here, so I'm going to have here, 12 in there that's 1 over that's 2 times 12 that's 1 over 25 minus 1 over again that's going to be 15 2 times 7 14 plus 1 15 okay so now I have 2 fifths times the lin of now when I um, let me simplify this first let me simplify this first this is going to be 5 that's 2 over 5 minus the lin of that's going to be 1 over, um, divided by 5, 1 over 3, right? Plus, and this is going to be minus, because this is the common factor here is going to be, this is smaller than that, so it be, well, let me just, let me just work it out first. 25 and 15, 25, 50, 75, 75, okay, 75, so that's going to be uh, 3 over 75, minus 15 into 75 is 5 and 50 plus 25 that's 5 okay good all right now this gives us two fifths times the lin of you're going to have two fifths divided by one third which is going to be times three over one okay because remember when you combine these you have to use the law of division so you have two fifths divided by one third which is the same as two fifths times three over one okay and plus this is going to be minus 2 over 75 so we're going to have two fifths lin of that's going to be 6 over 5 minus minus 2 over 75 and i think that is our answer because the question said what the question said find oh sorry the question's over here it says, giving your answer in the form P, lin Q, plus R, where P, Q, and R are rational numbers. It means fractions. You can write them as fractions. So we've got it in that form here. Okay, 2 fifths lin, 6 over 5 minus 2, 2 over 75. And there we have our answer. 
And that's the answer to this question, question number two, part B. And that completes this question. Other questions from this particular paper can be found in the playlist that will appear in the top right corner of the screen at the end of the video. Other questions from this topic of partial fractions. I'll put partial fractions here and I'll put integration here. Okay. Um, maybe the integration will be under the title integration with partial fractions. I don't know. I'll see. And then you're going to also uh, have a link here to subscribe to the channel if you haven't done so. Thank you for watching and see you soon.